you have taught me how to move my tongue and this has helped me so much with my speech and I have never learned this before and it was all natural and it felt very good so I want to thank you for helping stutterers like me improve their speech so much. 14 years of speech therapy that I have been very much involved with being with him, waiting for him, and <laughs> talking to speech therapists, researching. So I'm just thankful that I went with my gut on this just because it just sounded right. I mean, I've read the things online. This person has this credential and this, this, but I think of you as it's very real and our world isn't very real anymore. It's very money making and this and that. Just very difficult to navigate sometimes, I think. And so I just kind of went with my gut on this. And 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 not and not really have, have to worry so much about about stuttering or 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 having a a block that that makes me feel un 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 uncomfortable because I feel like it that the person I am talking to like is 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 judging me I am now looking towards my right and I'm looking into a room that is between our big space living room and my kitchen and I see a black table there with a computer on it and a keyboard and there's a lot of papers on it. I think it was about 100% accuracy. I was very comfortable. With all the therapies I've been to with him, I've never seen anything like this because we've had, as you know, so much therapy and not a lot of progress. And I am very angry at the system because you don't know. You, you believe that people say, oh, he needs to go to speech therapy. And then you do everything you can, fly to different states and do everything to try to help. And, you know, in the end, you feel so guilty because you shouldn't have done any of that. I'm very frustrated and angry with the whole thing. But I am also very happy to have met up with you and have had this experience today because I think he very much needs something positive to look forward to and he needs something to work on. We never know what to work on because everybody says something different. I love where you show emotion with words. He has not done that in so, so many years. He never yells across a room for someone, ever. He's never had an argument with anyone and he's 19 years old or pretty much initiate conversation. So. I just think you're not living unless you can do these things and I very much want this for him. Of course. And I feel like today was very positive. So, and I liked also that you were hard on him and me, <laughs> I might add. Um, but, you know, I mean, he needs to feel positive, but he needs to, you know, be stopped and fixed, right? This course was helpful and I learned a lot of natural ways of speaking instead of a lot of the methods and techniques that I've always been learning that normal people that don't stutter actually don't use. It was excellent for me to learn how normal people speak and how to drop the tongue.
and to not use all these other crazy strategies and methods that make me think so much before I talk. This was a very good course for me. Day number one, I was just absorbing everything because you were teaching me a lot and I wasn't really talking that much. I was just learning a lot and it was a little bit frustrating at times because at that point I didn't know how to use my tongue. I started to enjoy it more once I was getting better and I was using my tongue more. Day number two, I had improved so much and I had gained a lot of confidence and I was still getting a little bit frustrated because you were hard on me and picking out things that I was doing wrong. <laughs> so I didn't like that too much. But I was enjoying it because I could feel and I could hear how good I was speaking. So I was feeling pretty good about it. Today was very good because I got to sort of solidify what I've learned and practiced it more and I think I'm still learning a lot and now I'm a little bit tired because we've been talking for a long time and since 8 o'clock but overall I feel very good about where I am now and I'm a lot more confident about my speech. I first learned that something was wrong with me when I was four years old because my parents brought me to a speech pathologist. I just remember doing a lot of like puzzles and games, playing with her and I guess talking with her, but I don't remember that much. We lived in Monroe near a woman who was a speech pathologist. And one day we were in Costco. She was listening to him talk and he had like a slight stutter. And she said, that's what I do for a living. And I'd love to help him and blah, blah, blah. And then we started to go see her a couple times a week. Her therapy was very much like puff before you say a word, like what, the, puff air. What does it mean, puff air? So she was trying to get him to puff the air out, but I actually, you know, after watching all of what you're doing, I actually think that was really pushing. Puffing is pushing. He probably did that for a year. <gasps> and then- A whole year! Puffing yeah. for a whole year! And then she moved to Boston, and then we went on to different people. And then we went to Robin Story, this woman, and she was more of a reading specialist. She did a lot of phrasing with him, you know, separating after each word when you read, which of course you do read well that way because you, you're you only reading two words at a time, which is kind of what you're saying. So the reading was very good, but it didn't really change the speech that much. And then all of this kept going on until he was in like seventh grade. And then one day we were sitting at the kitchen table and he said, mom, you don't have to think before you talk. And I always have to think before I talk. And I was like, what do you mean? I just meant like I had to do so much planning and worrying about talking before I was speaking, whereas people that do not stutter don't really have to do that process and don't have to do so much work before they speak. And then my mom brought me to a stuttering specialist who was also a stutterer himself and we went to Atlanta, Georgia and I did a short intense speech 
session for three days with him and i thought that when i returned home i was speaking pretty well this year i went to college and wasn't using a lot of the methods he was teaching me and i just lost good speech when my mom picked me up from college she could tell that i hadn't been speaking that much and i was struggling a lot and when you talk to this man that's a therapist he still stutters when he talks is extremely monotone yes he has his stutter under control there's no doubt but he doesn't show any emotion he's very difficult and dry to talk to and that that definitely isn't mark's personality last night for the first time i heard him really yell and really show expression and it was almost like breathing for the first time like oh like i can you know let go like the tension and everything just was like okay i got <laughs> and that made me feel good so he has to get accepted into it so someone evaluated him but because i was involved with the conversation she basically said mark's not ready he needs to wait another year till he's ready to wait till next may and then i got aggravated because i said okay what parent is going to say okay mark keep being this way keep being lonely keep not talking to anyone because you don't think he's ready what would show that you're ready stutterers don't really like to talk on the phone so he wasn't going to have a long conversation with her on the phone if that's what she was waiting for that just made me mad that made me feel like what kind of program is that that you don't see a person who's struggling so much and not say yeah we're going to help him even if they kick him out of the program we're going to try they didn't say that nothing then i found you my mom was searching for stuttering programs on the computer and she saw your program and then i watched the webinar of yours with her and i thought it was impressive and after doing the webinar with you i was like Yep, we're going to do it. And one of the reasons why I thought that was because, honestly, because you were very positive. In that webinar, you made him believe that yes. there wasn't anything wrong with him. Yes, I thought the part of your webinar that was really good for me to hear was when you were making me believe that I can improve so much and that I can stop having blocks and stop feeling uncomfortable whereas speech therapists that I've been to have tried to reduce my stuttering and reduce my blocks but they never really made me believe that I could do it so well to this extent that I can stop blocking and stop having uncomfortable situations. The best part was is that you continually say that you're normal you're just like everybody else because I, by the time you get to be 19 i sure you don't believe that anymore so i felt that that was a very positive thing once we had the webinar i even said i don't care i want to do it because that conversation made mark feel good and he needs to feel good at this age at this a point in his life about this Otherwise, there's no going forward unless you feel that positivity. So I felt that that part was a very important. I loved it. I am actually pretty hard on my children, I would say, in many ways. But I have not been very hard on Mark. And when you say the immaturity, that's on us here. He's the baby of five. He's four years apart from twin boys who basically just talk to each other. And like 
12 years or whatever, apart from the oldest ones, mm. basically in some ways an only child, even though there are a lot of children involved. And I was always very easy on him about a lot of things. Like he, I loved how you told him stop moving his arms and he has a lot of different physical tics and I feel like if I had said things that you say, like you just don't put up with it at all. You just to like knock it off. And you know, that's not our culture obviously here in the United States. I always feel like me and my friend, my female friends are more like that with our children than anybody else, but not as tough as you. And that helped me see that I can be hard on him because he's actually very resilient. And he needs someone to say like, you know, cook your breakfast. It, I'm not even talking about speech. I'm talking about I do a lot of things for Mark and so do all of us. And also make your bed. Yes, make your bed. <laughs> and we let him get away with a lot and with the speech, same thing. And that didn't help. And I loved that you were very tough on everything, including myself. I just think it helped me to be able to help him. I went online because he came home with such a tongue thrust. Like it was so far out of his mouth, Anna. And I was like, I cannot watch this anymore. I'm done with this tongue. I tell him I'm cutting it off. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> so I started to look at things online about tongue thrusting. I realized that he doesn't have control of his tongue because I asked him to put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, put your tongue behind your front teeth, bottom teeth. And he could do the roof of the mouth, but he couldn't do behind his front bottom teeth. And I'm like, well, that's a problem right there. So then I looked at your program. I saw that it was all about your tongue. And that's what really intrigued me because that's when I put two and two together. Like, this is very much about his tongue. What I'm angry about is not one time has anyone ever said anything about his tongue or just drop your tongue. No one has ever, ever said that. Not once. I just got so fed up with it that I figured it out. <laughs> His speech over the last three days has been significantly improved. Almost the, the more pleasing thing is I haven't seen that damn tongue come out of his mouth. Have you seen it once? No. No, no I... First day. Yeah. And that, to me, you talk about having conversations with other teenagers and even a girl. You can't meet a girl and <clears throat> stick that tongue out. If he stammers a little bit, that's one thing. But if he's jerking his head and the tongue is coming out. It's scary for people. People don't understand why is he doing it. It's weird. You have taught me how to move my tongue and this has helped me so much with my speech and I have never learned this before and it was all natural and it felt very good so I want to thank you for helping stutterers like me improve their speech so much. Thank you Rana.